How's everyone doing today? Today we're going to be talking about NTP, which is Network Time Protocol. And so what it is, is a server out on the internet that has a time database um, that's synchronized with other servers and on different layers. And uh, what happens is that when you're in the Eastern time zone or any other time zone, it connects with your uh, s uh, computer and it actually gives you the most updated time. And uh, it's pretty smart to have some programming in there to, um, you know, account for latency and things like that. Um, but pretty much, if you ever want to change your time server, um, you can go to CronyC or NTP.com, depending on the system that you have. So if you go here, we can see here, uh, this is the pool, right? And then um, this is the address of where the time server is. And then it's in the iBurst mode. All right, um, and to kind of go over it a little bit, because I know I'm going over these uh, terms uh, with the A-burst and all that. So what the pool is, uh, the very first one, uh, the term pool uh, just refers to a group of publicly available NTP servers that are managed collectively to provide an accurate uh, timekeeping. So these servers are organized in a way that allows clients to distribute the load among multiple servers, enhancing reliability and reducing the strains of individual servers. When you configure NTP client to use a pool of servers, you're essentially telling the client to connect to any available server from the pool. This client will choose servers based on proximity, reachability, and accuracy. So we're connecting to the pool at uh, Red Hat, which is Red Hat Enterprise uh, Linux. So this is the web address that we're connecting and is a pool of servers, all right? And when we're talking about iBurst, um, it's pretty much an option that can be added to several lines in the NTP configuration file. So when it's used, it modifies the behavior of the NTP client when it's trying to synchronize with the server. The iBurst option tells the client to send a burst of packets in, the, in quick succession when initializing synchronization. So the burst of packets help the client to quickly access the time offset and skew between itself and the server. So it pretty much accelerates the initial synchronization process, which is especially useful for when the uh, client's clock significantly is different from the server's clock. So like I said, for example, um, instead of sending like one packet out when it's doing the synchronization, it'll send many, many packets out. And when those packets come in, it gives it like, like the basically the lag of time that it takes to connect there and come back, like pretty much the... Um, different uh, you know latency and things like that and then from there it's able to calculate to try to synchronize your system or synchronize your time to make sure that is the uh, closest time all right let's exit out of here why is not exiting in the cool let me exit okay cool so um, that's one aspect the other one is called hardware clock so you always want to check this um, and if I check the hardware clock it looks correct so this is pretty much your BIOS uh, your for your hardware. So if you're like, uh, you know, your hardware clock is incorrect, you can always use hardware clock. And there's a command here where you can actually uh, synchronize your clock. Now if we scroll down here, there should be one for synchronize. So if we go down here, we should be able to see it. There it is. So, uh, no, that's not it. <laughs> that's definitely not it. Where the heck is it? Oh, it's this one right here. So you use this one. So set the hardware clock from the system clock. So what you can do is from the system clock, which is pretty much getting it from the NTP um, at this moment, it will uh, update your hardware clock. And it's pretty cool. So you can use that if you ever have like some discrepancy. Um, and then um, with NTP servers, it's not that much. I mean, you could check your configuration. There's a couple of them. You can do the tracking. It uh, gives you a little bit more info um, about it. You can also, there's other commands too, but it's not that important. Uh, you can look at the sources. So these are the main sources that I have right now. Um, these are just different uh, servers. I think this is the Red Hat one, but I'm not exactly sure. But these are the different time servers that there is. Um, you know, so yeah, like you have multiple ones in case one fails. And then the other thing is we can use is time date CTL. So there it is. So time date control. So this is telling me more information about me. So my local time is EDT time, right? And then we have the UTC, and then we have the real time clock, which is basically the actual, the BIOS clock. So RTC is pretty much uh, the hardware clock or the BIOS clock. 
Then the time zone, it tells me what time zone I'm in. Um, is the system clock synchronized, um, which it is. And then NTP is active. And then um, the real time clock in the local time zone, that's synchronized also, so everything is good. Um, and then we can also do time zone, um, man, uh, you know, time, date, uh, CTL. This gives you more information, it gives you the status, you can show, um, you can set your time zone. So if you wanna set your time zone, you just have to list your time zone, and then from there, you just copy and paste, put it here. And then it says take a Boolean argument. This is for your RTC. If you want to check, uh, you know, set up your real time clock, you can also use this. Um, but let's look at this. What are options we have for the time zone? Time date CTL. We're gonna look. Uh, what was it? Uh, list time zones. What was it time zone? Okay, I definitely probably uh, butchered that. So let's look at it real quick. Okay, there wasn't any. I think okay cool all right there it is so you can look for it here um, if you want to make it easier you can just uh, grep for it so you can do grep and then for me is America so I can do I America right you can just go here and this will be a lot more easier to sh uh, shift through and you just look for the closest uh, pretty much city on your um, in your area so if you're in the East Coast, you look for New York, and if you're on San Francisco, I mean uh, California, and maybe you know Washington, you're gonna look for some, uh, you know, city in that uh, in that section. All right, um, that's pretty much it. Um, if you wanted to change it, um, I, uh, obviously you can use we can use the map map pages here to uh, get more information. You will just get that time zone if you want to change it. Um, you can also change the time if you want to be specific. Uh, you know. There's a little bit more um, info. Uh, set NTP. Uh, I'm not sure really see what this one's for. So it controls whether the network time is active. So if it's not active, cool. So obviously you want that active. Make sure that it's always doing that. Um, and then there's a lot more other properties that you can use. But like the main ones that you're going to use, it's uh, listing your time zone. So you pick the correct one and then setting your time zone. And that's pretty much it what people use for this one. That's it. Um, and then obviously you want to make sure your NTP uh, time is uh, synchronized. If it's synchronized, it's a lot more easier uh, to, you know, to actually make sure that it's correct. Um, and like I said, if you do want to synchronize it, um, you know, like I said, you can use this command, which is uh, cron uc. And then we can use uh, a and then make step. And then what this does, it will just pretty much synchronize it um, automatically. And that's pretty much it. And then like your horror clock, like I said, we can use this command, which is sys, and then H-T-O-H-C. Okay. And that should be it. I think I forgot the double dash, like usual. Okay, there it is. So if you do this, this will help update your horror clock. And if you want to get your horror clock, you can just go horror clock. And that's it. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, this is meant to be a short video. Um, just a little bit of uh, tidbits in here, a little bit of information of how to, what NTP is and like uh, some of the commands that work. If you want a very detailed uh, video, I can make a more detailed video. Uh, my video depends on you. I do this as a hobby. Um, I really enjoy uh, doing this. So if you guys have anything that I missed, anything I can do better, uh, please comment below. And I really appreciate you guys for watching. Um, you know, I'm still developing um, as time goes on, uh, you know, and getting better with my content and things like that. So I really appreciate you guys. You guys have a great night or a great day. Bye.